Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, the Brooke Ashley, and today we are here to discuss The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, season 12, episode 21, which is the finale. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The way this finale left off, something tells me that the Fox Force 5 will be back. But it's gonna be a bit different because of the rift now between Kyle and Erica and Rena. Kyle, let me just say that while Erica and Rena are full of it, you found out who your real friends are because the way Rena and Erica played in your face, you found out that night, like the old people used to say, that fat meat was greasy. Because baby, for Rena and Erica to pull that stunt at your event, I said, girl, I hope you know that those are not your friends. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I don't have that much sympathy for Kyle. Because it was all fun and games when Kyle was not the target of Erica and Rena's venom. But now since she and her sister are at the hands of Rena and Erica and what they're doing. Now she wants to cry and say, oh my gosh, it's not fair. Why won't they just let it go? The same way that they didn't let it go with other people. But y'all, let me not jump ahead. Let's just jump right on into it because as you guys can see, I have a lot to say and we don't have a minute to spare. So we start this finale episode off with Garcelle. She's at home and her home is beautifully decorated because she is having a Bubbles and Birkins party. I live, all right? You guys know I hopefully, Lord willing, I am able to purchase a Birkin. I was just in heaven during this scene. But anyhow, as Garcelle's waiting for everybody to arrive, we see that Garcelle has borrowed Kathy Hilton's butler, Patrick. And we all remember Patrick from last season. I loved him. He was so fun, just so sweet. And I love how he and Garcelle were speaking French. French is just such a beautiful language. Like I really want to learn how to speak it. But again, let me not go off on a tangent. But anyhow, Miss Garcelle, please teach some of the women on Atlanta because that was a spread. Garcelle had the champagne out. She had the food, charcuterie. She had chicken and waffles. She had fruit. I mean, a full spread. And you already know that my mouth was watering. <laughs> so Garcelle is saying that she is so fascinated by Birkins. She loves them. She doesn't own one just yet, but she really can't wrap her head around buying one. Now, you guys know my philosophy. I feel like tomorrow is not promised. If you have the money, spend it today. <laughs> we are not taking any of this with us when we go. So I'm going to enjoy what I have while I am still here. <laughs> if I got it, I'm buying it. <laughs> I loved how Garcelle had her friend who sells Birkins over. And he was giving Garcelle the history of Birkins and Kelly's. So it was so funny because there was a really cute pink Hermes clutch and Patrick said, oh, I want that pink one. How much is it? And so Garcelle's friend Christo said, oh, it's 1500. Patrick had me screaming. He said, 1500? I might have to sell my body. <laughs> I was like, Patrick, do you want to come to the East Coast? I will gladly have you at one of my parties, please. <laughs> So now we flip to a parallel scene with Kyle. She's at home and she is setting up her backyard for a black tie event. We learned that the Princess Grace Foundation reached out to her and they asked if they could host their party at her home and she said, of course. Now, while I have many thoughts about Kyle Richards, I will give her her props. She has a beautiful home and she knows how to throw a good party. And the chandeliers that they were setting up outside, those were so pretty. I was like, oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we learned that the Princess Grace Foundation is launching their first US luxury brand where 100% of the profits go to charity. So we also learned that all the women are going to be draped in these gorgeous diamonds and they're allowing all the women 
to borrow and wear some pieces for the night. And during this scene, it made me say, this is what we want to see. We want to see the black tie events. We want to see the fabulous jewelry. We want to see these ladies having some fun, throwing some light shade. But when it crosses a line, where now cease and desist letters are being thrown around, people are being accused of saying slurs, that brings down the show. And I feel like Beverly Hills has lost the plot. They lost the plot about four seasons ago when they pulled that stunt with Lisa Vanderpump. So now we flip right back over to Garcelle and we see the party is starting. Cherie arrives first. And once again, bravo. Please do not bring Cherie back because she brought absolutely nothing. Half the time I forgot that she was even there. It was like, oh, Cherie's there? And then for her to sit there and go to Crystal's party with no gift and write her name on Garcelle's card like it was a joint gift from the both of them, I said, yeah, we don't need to see her back. <laughs> Now Rena arrives, Rena's in good spirits. She has this cute mini dress on and these Versace boots. And it was so funny because Patrick loves Rena. So he was like, oh my gosh, the lioness is here. So now we have Sutton arrive with her assistant. And when she saw Patrick, she was like, Patrick, I promise nobody's gonna be threatening me today. <laughs> I said, Sutton, after that dinner at Kathy Hilton's house, I think that Patrick has braced himself for anything whenever he's around all of you guys, okay? So I think that he was like, okay, you know, I'm prepped just in case another fight does break out. <laughs> so you know that Sutton is an Hermes stan. She comes in with her Birkin, she's wearing Gautier Couture, and her dress was made of Hermes scarves. I was like, that is everything. And Hermes scarves are gorgeous. Like, I want one so bad. Now, while Crystal is not my favorite, I have to say I was loving that look. That yellow baby doll dress is so pretty. I love a bright color. So it was just everything to me. And I like the Birkin that she had paired with it. And Crystal, please stop talking about you're so frugal. You're really not. But now we see Kyle show up. Kyle loves Birkins. So the minute she walks in, she runs over and she tries to grab the Birkin that Sutton is holding out of her hands. I was like, Kyle, you really have a fixation on Sutton, don't you? Because there were about 18 other Birkins sitting there on that table. Why are you trying to grab the one that Sutton is holding out of her hands? And I know that it was a joke, but still. I don't care what anybody says, but I don't think that Kyle actually likes Sutton. She can say what she wants. She can try to say that she does, but I don't believe it. I feel like she's always trying to throw some dig at Sutton, always being passive aggressive. And when she ran over to snatch that Birkin out of Sutton's hand, I just felt like something's off. I might be reaching, but like I said, I just do not believe that Kyle actually likes Sutton. So now we see Kyle and Rena say hi to each other. And you know, they're pleasant. But it's not the same like it's usually been in the past when they were super close. Kyle says that it feels awkward because of what happened between Rena and her sister the other day. And then she says that she is hoping that everybody can move on since Kathy has apologized. Now, Kyle, you have been friends with Lisa Rena for how many years now? She's been on this show for how many seasons? You have seen how she's treated other people. So you know that Rena is not going to let this go, especially with your sister being Kathy Hilton and the history that you and your sister have. Do you really think that she's gonna let this go? Let's be serious for a minute. Rena has a very sick and twisted spirit. She lives to make other people uncomfortable, humiliate them, and try to run them off by any means possible. So no, she is going to make things really hard for you and Kathy. So now we see Garcelle looking at this yellow Birkin that she really wants. Yellow is her favorite color. And so she's going back and forth. Sutton says, Garcelle, just buy it. You already had a Birkin cake. And then Kyle says, Garcelle, buy it. It's a great investment piece. If you don't like it, you can always sell it and make more money. So Garcelle says, fine, I'm gonna do it. And Garcelle, is now a Birkin bag owner. And I said, I know that's right. Garcelle works hard. 
She has been in the game for 30 years. Like, treat yourself. I was here for it. I was clapping. <laughs> I said, I'm happy for her like it's me. <laughs> so Garcelle has her Birkin. Everybody's happy. And now it's time for them to eat. And once again, my mouth was watering because that food looked delicious. So anyhow, we see Kyle and Garcelle go off to the kitchen and they start talking. And so Kyle brings up how Kathy came over to her house the other day and how Kathy apologized. So Garcelle's like, apologized for what? So Kyle says, oh my gosh, I forgot. You and Cherie went to bed. You guys didn't come to the club with us. And so Kyle says she apologized for her actions when we were out. So Garcelle says, well, that's good to hear. Does Rena know that Kathy apologized? And Kyle says, well, that's the thing. Rena does know because she was there at my house yesterday when Kathy apologized. So Kyle says, well, to be honest, Rena did not really accept Kathy's apology. And she told her to get some help. Now, while Rena was a complete asshole for telling Kathy to get some help and not accepting the apology, I do want to point out how Kyle seems to be in awe of the fact that her sister finally apologized for something. You can tell within their dynamic that it's a rare occurrence for Kathy to apologize or take accountability or responsibility for anything. And after reading this book, let me tell you something. You want to talk about a juicy read and no, nobody is paying me to promote this, but baby, they did not have a chance to have a real relationship. I mean, it's a crazy read. I can't wait to talk about it further on the next live, but yeah. So Kyle says, look, Kathy apologized. Let's move on and forget about it. Like, please make my life easier. So now Garcelle says in her confessional, that she grew up with five sisters, so of course it's always drama. And then she adds that if Kyle wants to sweep things under the rug for the sake of her family, then Rena should respect that and just butt out. And I agree wholeheartedly with Garcelle, but again, Rena is a very nasty person. And I think I said this in either last week's recap or the recap before last, but I suspect that Rena is jealous of the fact that Kyle is trying to have a relationship with her sisters and she wants to break them up. I don't think that Rena wants to see Kyle with a healthy relationship with her two sisters. I think that Rena enjoys when Kyle is crying about how she's on the outs with Kim and Kathy. And because of that, she's determined to make things awkward between Kyle and Kathy. It's very sad. But I also think that it's sad that Kyle has to live in this state of let's sweep everything under the rug just for the sake of us getting along and not arguing. That's a crazy dynamic to have as well. Because here you are letting things fester and pretending like you're happy when you're really miserable. So now Kyle says that at the end of the day, all roads lead back to her and she cannot have another fallout with her sister yet again. Then she says that she wants all her sisters, all her nieces, all her nephews to be at Farrah's wedding. And then Kyle adds that when she was fighting with Kathy years ago, how she didn't see her other nieces and nephews. And I said, now Kyle, girl, it's about to be the same thing yet again, because online, Paris Hilton has been on Twitter liking and retweeting all the tweets against Kyle because she has been pissed off at how Kyle has been in cahoots with Rena and Erica all season long. So I will not be surprised if their relationship is strained yet again. So now Garcelle and Kyle go back to join the rest of the women and they bring up how Doree couldn't attend the Bubbles and Birkins party because it was her son's eighth birthday. And then we see that Erica couldn't come because of something. I said, yeah, Erica was not trying to be around all those Birkins knowing that she's broke, okay? <laughs> so that's why she didn't attend. Now, I will say I was a bit annoyed about Kathy not being at Garcelle's party. I would have loved to see her. This is the second time that Garcelle has had a party at her house that Kathy was not there for. So now Sutton interjects and she brings up her dating adventures. And remember how 
Sutton is on Bumble trying to find a man. So she says that she was talking to this guy off the app and they were talking for 40 minutes. They were getting along well. And so all of a sudden the call dropped. So she says that she called him back and she couldn't reach him. And then all of a sudden she tried to text him and the text went green, which means that he blocked her. So Sutton says, you know what I think happened? I think that his girlfriend or his wife came in the room and they busted him and that's why he hung up the phone abruptly. So now Kyle jumps in and says, or maybe you were clumsy with your words and you offended him. And while it was meant to be a joke, I was like, Kyle, shut up. Like, it's not funny. And like I said earlier, I just feel like Kyle always takes a passive aggressive dig at Sutton. I don't like it. And I might be reaching, but I really don't think that Kyle likes Sutton. Why would you even say that knowing the history between Sutton and Diana? Like you just can't help yourself. But Sutton, that probably is the case. His other woman probably walked in the room and he said, oh, you know what? It's about to be curtains for me. So let me hang up this phone and let me block her. <laughs> so of course the conversation could not be easy breezy. Garcelle addresses Rena and she says, hey, Rena, Kyle was just telling me that you saw Kathy yesterday. So here goes Rena being dramatic, doing the most for no reason. And she's like, yeah, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw Kathy. I mean, yeah, you know, um, it was good. You know, it was okay. Like, it was good. I mean, yeah, it was good, I guess. Like, yeah, I saw Kathy. And I was like, Rena, why do you always have to do the most all the time? Like, was that really necessary? Like, I, I don't get it. You act like Kathy killed somebody. Okay, she had an outburst. She said some nasty things about her sister. But what's new? Her and Kyle have been on the out for ages now. But she apologized to you and Kyle. So why are you so pressed about it? And Rena, we have seen you and your many outbursts and tantrums over the years. You have been on this show now for what? Seven or eight years? and you have shown your ass in damn near every single season. So for you to act like you're just so appalled and just so disgusted that Kathy Hilton could just act like that, but we've seen you act a fool several times. We can go down the list. You have no right to critique anybody's behavior. So now Rena turns to Kyle and she's like, well, Kyle, how do you feel about the whole thing? And of course, she's being super smug because Rena can't help herself. And now Kyle says, well, I feel good. I'm very happy that she apologized. Now let's move on. So now Rena starts questioning Garcelle and she's like, Garcelle, do you even know what happened in Aspen? Garcelle says, no, I don't know what happened, but I do know that Kathy texted me at 12.50 a.m. So now Rena wants to one-up Garcelle and she says, well, that's interesting because she texted me at 12.53 a.m. I was like, okay, why do we care? So then Rena adds that she had went to bed already and then she locked herself in the room. So Garcelle was like, you locked yourself in your room? Why? And I said, Garcelle, you are all of us right now because there is no way in the hell that Kathy Hilton could ever scare me or anybody where I would lock myself in a room. Rena is trying her absolute hardest to make Kathy look terrible. And I'm getting secondhand embarrassment because you know that you sound stupid to even tell somebody that you locked yourself in the room because Kathy Hilton was having a meltdown. Rena, you are the same woman who threatened and threw a glass at Kim Richards in season five. And then you tried to choke her out. So I highly doubt that you are afraid of anybody. And I really want to know, are you aware of how crazy you look? So Rena says to Garcelle, yes, Garcelle, I locked myself in the bedroom because I was shook at what was going on. So now Kyle says, look, just accept the apology and move on already. Rena is like a dog with a bone. And I said, Kyle, now let's rewind the tapes back, sis, because you knew this about Rena, but it was all fun and games until it was done to you. Because you didn't mind when Rena was harassing Yolanda and LVP and Denise Richards. Kyle, you've also been a big instigator this season as well too. 
So once again, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy for Kyle. Yes, what Rena's doing is evil, and she's definitely blowing this out of proportion to make Kathy look bad. But what I won't do is ignore all the nasty stuff that Kyle has been doing for seasons as well. So now Rena starts being really nasty and she's like, you know what, Kyle? This is something that you and Kathy need to deal with. So Kyle's like, again, Kathy apologized. Can we all move on, please? Like, think about me. Think about what I'm dealing with. Just please, let's move on already. And you already know how Kyle is. Kyle is on the verge of tears and she walks off to the kitchen. So Rena runs after Kyle and it's more BS coming out of her mouth. She's like, look, Kyle, I'm sorry. It's just a very tricky situation and she needs some help. You know what I mean? And Kyle was looking at Rena like she wanted to slap Rena. And if I were Kyle, I would have cursed her out. Like, you know what, Rena? Me and you are done. We don't need to speak. I see what you're trying to do and we don't have to be friends because you're not going to sit up here and try to disrespect my sister and play on my intelligence. And if Kathy needs help, then what do you need, Rena? Because I have a few suggestions for you. Rena has more issues than Vogue and she wants to diagnose somebody. Girl, no. <laughs> so Kyle says that Rena is putting her in a worse situation with her sisters and how she needs Rena to just move on from this and accept the damn apology. Now, Kyle, you are asking for something that you are never going to get from Rena. So now we get to the next scene, which is the big night of Kyle's black tie event at her home where she's gonna be hosting the Princess Grace Foundation. So we see all the women getting ready and now we flip to Lisa, Rena, and Erica in the car because of course you don't see one without the other and they're talking about the whole mess with Kathy and Aspen. I was like, do you have anything else to talk about? Kathy lives in your brain rent free because why are you talking about this morning, noon, and night? It's enough already. You are so desperate to take this woman down. I was like, somebody please play Obsessed by Mariah Carey because it's turning into a full-blown fixation. You will not stop talking about Kathy Hilton. Like, leave it alone. She had a meltdown. She made an ass of herself. The blogs got wind of it because you and Erica leaked it, but it happened. It's done. Move on. Bravo. If you know, like I know, you guys will do the right thing and bring back Kim Richards. Nobody has been able to get Lisa Rinna together like Kim Richards. So anyhow, Rinna's talking about how Kathy has been sending out cease and desist letters and how it's a known fact about what Kathy did and how she showed her ass in Aspen. And so we see clips of different YouTubers and podcasters talking about how they believe that Kathy is lying and they believe Rena. When the news first broke about Kathy having this breakdown, my first thought was, okay, I can see that. But then when they said that Lisa Rena said that she was saying slurs and all this stuff, I said, now wait a minute, because we all know that Lisa Rena cannot be trusted. Rena is somebody where she has no credibility to me. So if she says something, I need to see it for myself because she will always put some extra sauce on a story. So now Rena brings up the text message between her and Kathy, how Kathy told her that silence is golden and how she will not be silenced by Kathy because Kathy knows what she did. Then she says that she acted like a fool at that club. Her behavior was disgusting and the press got a hold of it. And I said, you really think that we're dumb? You and Erica know that you guys are both on your phones texting everybody at People, In Touch, Us Weekly, Star Magazine, National Enquirer to get this story out. And Rena, if you want to talk about somebody acting a fool at a club, then what's your excuse for showing your ass at Dorit's charity dinner? I'll wait. And I don't want to hear the excuse about how you're dealing with grief because many of us have lost parents unexpectedly and we have not shown our asses or lashed out at anybody or made fools of ourselves at charity dinners. So again, it's the audacity and the lack of self-awareness 
and the delusions for me. And I really hit the floor when Rena was like, you know, I've never seen behavior like that. I said, girl, look in the mirror. Like, are we really doing this right now? And then Erica just shaking her head, agreeing. I was like, you guys are nuts. Cursing people out, calling them the C word, screaming and yelling, threatening people, pointing your fingers in somebody's face but yet you're appalled and shocked at someone else's behavior. Make it make sense. So now we move on to Kyle and she's almost ready, but now it's time for her to put the jewelry on. So she is wearing this gorgeous 52 carat necklace. I think it was $3 million. Then they loan her a ring. The ring was, I think, $600,000. Either way, it was gorgeous. But I thought that Kyle's gown was pretty. I liked her hair and the ponytail. She looked good. Do you know who Kyle sort of favors? She kind of reminds me of Brooke Shields. Let me know. Am I off? But she kind of does favor Brooke Shields. But anyhow, we see Doree and PK arrive. Now, while Doree gets on my nerves, I love that gown. I thought that Doree looked great. Definitely gave old Hollywood glam. The jewelry rep puts a $5 million necklace around her. I was like, oh my gosh. And then Dorit joking around talking about, oh my gosh, babe. Like, I'm sorry that we left the credit cards at home. I said, girl. Ladies, maybe get a word? Hide the money, y'all. There's poor people around. <laughs> With your broke ass. <laughs> when it comes to PK and Dorit, their money is a little funny. So we see Diana and Asher arrive. Of course, Diana has to throw shade that she has so much money that she doesn't even need to borrow any of that jewelry. I was like, okay, girl. <laughs> but we see that Kyle's longtime friend, the infamous Faye Resnick is there. And I'm surprised that Faye Resnick has not been approached to be a full-time housewife. I think that Faye would be a good addition. She's been in this circle for a very long time. She's friends with Kris Jenner as well and the Kardashians. She was around with the whole OJ trial. Like, yeah, I want to see Faye Resnick. So now we see Cherie, Sutton, and Garcelle pull up to Kyle's house. Now, Garcelle, I love you. You are a beautiful woman, okay? That face card never declines. However, this look, I wasn't loving it. A sexy nude lip would have been great, but that green lipstick, I was like, Garcelle, no, not for a black tie affair. The green lipstick made her look feel kind of costumey to me. I don't know. Did anybody else feel the same way? Because I was just like, Garcelle, no. <laughs> And don't get me wrong, I am all for experimenting and switching up your look, you know, trying to keep it, you know, different and fresh and fun. But that green lipstick just kind of missed the mark for me. <laughs> so as the event is going on, we see Kyle and Crystal posted up at the bar. So Kyle's telling Crystal that things with Kathy are not good right now. A lot of stuff going on. Obviously, with the stuff being leaked to the press, it's a whole lot. So Crystal says, look, this should have been handled between you two and nobody else. And it was not cool how this stuff went to the press. So now Crystal says, do you think that Erica and Rena leaked it to the press? And Kyle's like, girl, duh, obviously, who else would it be? They're the most upset about it. They won't let this go. They keep bringing it up every single time we see them. Like, obviously, it was them. So now we see a clip of Campire being featured, and he's talking about the whole situation. And I was like, I know that is right. Let me tell you something. Bravo watches black YouTubers. Don't let anybody tell you different. They watch. And congratulations, Kempire. That is amazing. That is huge. I was squealing at my TV like, oh my gosh. And let them know that the price went up, okay? <laughs> price went up. So now we see Crystal saying, what's the point of them talking about this? Like, what's their motive? And I was like, Crystal, why are you asking a question that you already know the answer to? We know what the motive is. 
The motive is to run Kathy off this show. And I wouldn't be surprised if they want to run Kyle off this show too, because they probably are tired of Kyle being the OG of this franchise. There's probably some jealousy there on Rena and Erica's part about she's been there since season one and they came in the mix around season five and season seven. So please, they're trying to kill two birds with one stone because if they get Kathy, then that means they're also getting Kyle. So now Kyle says nobody gets to judge who gets forgiven and what they need to do. Was Kathy an asshole that night? Yes, but she apologized. So we all need to move on if you care about me. And then Kyle adds that in the end, she and her kids are going to be hurt by this whole fallout. Now, Kyle, you should know better than anybody that Rena and Erica are two soulless individuals and they don't care. They do not give a flying you know what about you and your family being hurt by this whole mess. They are only out for themselves and to keep their spots on this show. So that means destroying a family in the process. That's just another Monday. They don't care. You have put your trust in the wrong people. And I know it has to be a slap in the face, especially with how hard you went for Miss Erica Jane. So now Crystal says, well, look, Kyle, Erica and Rena just arrived. And then Kyle says, I hope that we can all have a beautiful night. And Kyle, you must have forgotten what show you're on and who your castmates are because keep dreaming. <laughs> so now we see everybody seated for dinner and the seating arrangements were very interesting. We have Rena and Erica Dorit sitting next to each other. And then we see Kyle and Garcelle seated next to each other. And I found it interesting how Kyle was really leaning on to Garcelle. I said, you've been so shady towards Garcelle, but now when you're on the outs with your BFFs, now you want to lean on her for her help. So Kyle's asking Garcelle if Garcelle has spoken to Kathy, and Garcelle says, yes, I did speak to Kathy, and she's very upset. She's pissed that people are running with a story that makes her look bad. So Kyle is exhausted at this point and she says, but Kathy apologized to me and Rena the other day at my house. And Garcelle is like, why does she apologize? Like, I'm just so confused. So Kyle says, Rena was telling me that Kathy was saying these horrible things about me. Now, mind you, while Kyle and Garcelle are talking about this, Erica and Rena are looking across at them and they are staring into their mouths. So you have Erica whisper to Rena, and she's like, I think they're talking about us. And so Rena says, yeah, I know they are. Erica and Rena are truly nuts because how dare either one of them try to police what Kyle and Garcelle are talking about. That's not how this works. They say whatever they want to people and now they're pressed and bothered at what Kyle and Garcelle are talking about. How dare you get out of their conversation, stop trying to eavesdrop and focus on your meal and what's going on with you two. And they were staring at Kyle and Garcelle so hard that even Kyle was like, you know what, Garcelle, let's table this conversation for another time because we're being watched right now and I feel uncomfortable. Now, if I were Kyle, I would have looked at both of them like, yes, we're talking about you and then resume the conversation. I'll be damned if you have me feeling uncomfortable in my own home. Rena and Erica have some nerve to try to make them feel bad when they have said and done a lot worse. I have never seen people who desire to be the villain and the victim at the same time. So now the dinner's over and Garcelle says, okay guys, let's all walk over to where the heaters are because it was chilly that night. So her and Sutton walk over to one of the tables. And so Garcelle says, look, we need to get to the bottom of all this mess because at the end of the day, Kathy apologized. So now we see the rest of the ladies join Garcelle and Sutton. So Garcelle says, look, Rena, I just need to know, what exactly are you so offended by that you needed an apology from Kathy? So Rena just straight up lies and says, I don't need anything from Kathy. 
And I said, well, that's funny because for the past few episodes, you've been demanding an apology and an explanation from Kathy about her behavior. You have said it repeatedly. I need Kathy to answer for why she did that and why she acts like that and why she said all those awful things about her sister and the group. So for you to lie and say, well, I didn't need anything from Kathy. Well, you actually did. So Garcelle says, well, if that's the case, Kathy apologized. So why can't you just move on? Just let it go. So Rena is automatically defensive and just nasty. And Rena, here's where I almost called you out of your name because the microaggressions jumped out once again. I was so angry when you said, why are you being nasty, Garcelle? Why are you getting an attitude? I sent an attitude from you. I don't like that. What's that about? Every single time, Garcelle, who talks to people in a very measured, very even tone, anytime she addresses anybody in the Fox Force 5, they always say that she's bullying them, she's nasty, she's aggressive. They are always turning into Karens and using those buzzwords. Stop trying to paint Garcelle out to be this angry black woman with a bad attitude. That is not what this is, and you guys know it. We have seen you all raise your voices, scream, yell, curse, call other people the C word, and I have never heard the words aggressive, bully, or you have an attitude be directed at any of you guys. But anytime it comes to Garcelle saying anything, y'all always want to stamp her with those words. I am so sick and tired of it. And Rena, Garcelle should have cursed you clean out. How dare you? This woman has never raised her voice at anybody on this cast. She didn't even curse Erica out when Erica showed her ass with Garcelle's 14-year-old son. Garcelle has the patience of a saint. I was just so angry, like, oh my gosh, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to scream. Stop trying Garcelle like that. And Rena, you have no room to talk. No room at all. You told Sutton to get the F out of your house six or seven episodes ago. Is that not having an attitude? So Rena's being super nasty and she's like, who hasn't let it go? Who's not over it, Garcelle? Who are you talking to? And I'm thinking, it's you, idiot. You're the one who can't let it go. You keep bringing up what Kathy did every single time. And did anybody else scream when Rena said, I don't know why Garcelle is so opinionated about this whole thing when she wasn't even there to see what happened. And I said the same way that you speak on things that you didn't see either, sis. So you're the only one who can speak on situations and nobody else? So now Garcelle says, look, if I'm being honest, it just seems like since we're not talking about Erica anymore, let's now talk about Kathy. And I say, Garcelle, go ahead and speak on it, please. I don't care what anybody says. Garcelle is the people's champ because she is out here gathering all them just as calmly and as swiftly as she wants to. And again, I am here for it. So now Erica interjects to defend herself and she says, look, I've said some really awful things in the past, but I've owned up to it. And Kathy needs to own up to her stuff too. Now I said, wait a minute, what we won't do is lie. Erica has yet to give a sincere or thoughtful apology about the things that she said. That half-assed apology that she gave to Sutton on that private jet does not count. I will not sit here and allow Erica to get away with that. Erica has not owned up to anything. So now Garcelle looks over to Kyle and she says, Kyle, would you have rather this not been brought up at all? And Kyle says, look, I just don't want my family to be ruined and I want everybody at my daughter Farrah's wedding. So Garcelle says, if Kyle wants to sweep things under the rug with her sisters, then that's her right. And here goes Rena talking about, well, you can't sweep it under the rug. You want to sweep it under the rug and act like nothing happened? Like, you can't do that. So Rena's going on and on, and she's like, she said some really awful things that could ruin people's lives forever. And you know what? I've done all I can to protect the situation. I said protect the situation by talking about it nonstop, contacting the press, all the tabloids, all the blogs, all the bloggers. That's protecting the situation. 
Are you serious, Rena? So now Rena questions everybody and she's like, do you know what happened at the house? And they're all like, no, we don't know. Sutton interjects and says, girl, you've given zero details about what's happened. And I said, yes, Sutton, because she's lying. So Crystal jumps in to defend Kyle and she says, look, I think that what Kyle is saying, she just wants to mend things with her family and protect the legacy of her family. Now you already know that Erica and Rena do not care. So Erica interjects and she says, look, for a year and a half, I've been getting pummeled by the press, okay? So now Kyle jumps in and says, oh, so is that the reason why you wanna see Kathy be punished because of what's been happening with you? And Erica says, yes, that's exactly it. Bad behavior in a public place, there needs to be consequences. So Kyle is so upset and she says that they're trying to punish her. Now, it would have been at this point where I would have thanked Erica for her honesty and then I would have asked her to get the F out of my home. Erica and Rena are two people who refuse to take any ownership about the things that they do. There's always an excuse, there's always a reason as to why they were justified to lash out at somebody and show their ass and have a public breakdown. But when someone else does it, they wanna punish the person. So now Erica and Rena start yelling at Kyle and they're like, no Kyle, that's not it at all. Your sister is the one punishing you, not us. Now, I have to be fair. That is true. Yes, Rena and Erica are punishing Kyle. Kathy is also punishing her sister as well. All three of them are doing it. So now Kyle runs off to the bathroom because she's pissed and Dorit runs after her. So Kyle says, Dorit, don't you think it's weird that after every event, every single detail about what happened in Aspen is leaked to the press? Like, don't you find that strange? So Dorit says that she does find it strange. And then she says, do you think that they leaked it? And Kyle says, 100%. Then Kyle reveals that she was told who the leak was and the leak is in the group. She says that they're trying to take the attention off of them and put it all on Kathy. So at this point, things are so heated and messed up. They're all like, you know what? Shout out to everybody, I have fun. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Shout out to everybody, I have fun. Good. I gotta be good. <laughs> <laughs> Rena and Erica are on their way out to leave. Then Diana says that she's ready to leave. Garcelle and Sutton say they're gonna follow suit. And so at this point, we have Kyle in the house with Faye Resnick. She's telling Faye what happened. And then Sutton says, look, we need to get to the bottom of this. Who leaked the stories to the press? So as Rena and Erica are walking out the door to leave, Sutton walks up to them and she says, point blank, I need to know, just tell me. Did either one of you guys leak this story to the press? They both deny it. And then Sutton says, well, come back and tell Kyle because she thinks that somebody leaked it and she thinks that it was one of you guys. So now they walk back over with Sutton. Kyle is there. Faye is there. Garcelle, Dorit, the whole gang is sitting in the living room now and they're trying to get to the bottom of who leaked what. So Sutton asks in front of everybody, did Rena or Erica leak this info to the press? They both deny it again. And Erica says, I don't even know how to do that. I was like, girl, will you stop lying? All you have to do is call somebody up and say, hey, I have a story. <laughs> now, you all know that I don't really see it for Kyle because I think that Kyle is full of it too. But when I tell you that Kyle Richards actually cleared, so she says, well, actually, Erica, it was somebody on your team who leaked the story to the press. And I know this for a fact because Kathy launched an investigation and they found out that it was your publicist. Now, when Kyle revealed that information, did you see Rena and Erica's faces crack? They were not expecting that. So Erica says, well, send me that information. Send me what you have then. Somebody on my team? I mean, me 
and Nikki share a publicist. So why would he do that to his own client? I said, girl, stop. People have no loyalty. People will do anything for money. It doesn't matter if you and Kathy Hilton's daughter do share the same publicist. Please don't ever underestimate what somebody would or wouldn't do for some extra money. And especially if she guaranteed that he wouldn't get caught, I could definitely see him betraying the Hiltons. So Rena interjects because we all know that Rena and Erica are each other's mouthpieces. So Rena says, I've gotten a lot of calls too recently from my publicist and there are a lot of things being said about me. And that doesn't always mean that it's a leak. So Kyle says, look, I haven't gotten any calls. I don't even have a publicist. Bottom line is Kathy launched an investigation and they found out that it was somebody on Erica's team feeding stories to the press. So Erica says, once again, show me the proof. Then she says, how convenient. Kathy showed her ass in public and now Kyle wants to flip it on me because Kyle is afraid of what Kathy will do to her. I said, y'all cannot own up to anything. Kyle is not flipping anything on you. She's telling you the truth. You've been caught red-handed with your hand in the cookie jar, and now you want to sit there and talk about, I can't believe Kyle, how convenient. Her sister made a fool of herself. Now she wants to blame me. That's not what this is, Erica. When I tell you that one of you guys on Twitter had me screaming, when you said that Rena and Erica were standing there looking like Beavis and Butthead, I died. Like, I could not stop laughing. That's exactly how they looked. They both looked like two idiots. <laughs> <laughs> so now Rena gets mad and says that Kyle accusing Erica's publicist of leaking the stories is absolute BS. And the fact that Kyle is willing to go to great lengths to defend her sister and cover this up is pathetic and sad. I said, Rena, please shut up and take this bad acting somewhere else. So now Erica interjects and she brings up how her ass has been chewed up for the past two years with people saying awful things about her, about things that she didn't even do. I said, must you make everything about yourself? Erica, we don't care. It is not all about you. We're talking about Kathy and Kyle right now. It's so aggravating. And the reason why people have been talking about you, Erica, it's because of your poor attitude. You have lashed out at so many people and you have shown zero remorse for the victims in this whole situation. So that's why people have been chewing your ass up for two years because you have not shown an ounce of sympathy or compassion. So miss me with the sob story about how you've been getting chewed up for two years and you're so upset and you've had to take accountability. You haven't taken any piece of accountability about anything that you have said or done. So now Garcelle jumps in and says, who is trying to take Kathy down? So now Rena says, nobody wants to take Kathy Hilton down. She's going to take herself down by her own actions. So Kyle says that maybe people are doing this to try to distract from what Erica's going through. So now Erica says, let's be clear. Nobody takes the attention off of Erica, okay? Not even Kathy Hilton. Like, Kathy Hilton is not big enough to take the focus off of me. I said, girl, in your dreams. Erica, we didn't know you until you got on this show. Let's be clear. We knew who Kathy Hilton was. We've known her for a long time. And I was happy when Kyle said, girl, it is not a competition. And if you want to play the name game and who is more famous, Kathy Hilton trumps Erica Girardi, okay? <laughs> so things are getting so heated at this point. I mean, there is no resolution. It's just Kyle going back and forth between Erica and Rena. So Dorit walks over to Kyle and she whispers in her ear, that Kyle should have never brought this up. So Kyle gets up abruptly and she says, you know what, let me take this jewelry off, please. Like I'm over it, I'm done. So Rena and Erica storm off to leave. And then Kyle says, look guys, let's not make this a thing. Let's just move on. So you have Erica saying, Kyle, show me what you have. And Kyle says, okay, like I will, I got you. Expect the receipts in a few hours. So they finally leave. I said, thank God. And then Kyle says that 
she's unsure of where she stands with Rena and Erica at this point, and she's afraid that she might have to choose between her two friends and her sister. And this was the moment where the Fox Force 5 was changed forever. I had said this earlier on in this season that I believe Erica and Rena have made a pact that whatever happens, they will still be friends or in this weird alliance until the end. It is clear that they are going to cover for each other until the bitter end. And nobody is going to come between that, even if it is Kyle. So we end this finale learning about what the ladies are up to. With Doree, we learn that the robbers are still at large. Now I have to admit that I forgot all about that robbery. And I think it's very strange that we didn't hear a whole lot about it throughout the season. And then to find out that the robbers are still on the loose, I'm very surprised by that. Then we see Crystal. We learn that she adopted a new puppy and she's going to see an eating disorder specialist and she's taking it one day at a time. Then we see Diana. We learn that she suffered a miscarriage in May and she is still determined to have another child. Then we see that Sutton is still going strong with the guy that she met off of Bumble. His name was Sanjeet, but she insists that they're just friends. Now, I don't believe that. I think that Sutton is playing coy. I think that she and Sanjeet are dating. I don't know. Whatever Sutton is doing, I wish her all the best, and I hope that she does find love again. Then we see Garcelle. We see that her memoir has come out and how everybody liked the book except for Miss Erica. Remember how before the season started, Erica was trashing Garcelle's book. She threw it in the trash, took a picture of it on Instagram, like the clown that she is. Like, you're just such a hater. Garcelle really has you pressed, doesn't she? I was hoping that we were gonna get a full episode with Garcelle showing her book. I was annoyed that that got cut to a little two seconds at the very end. But good for Garcelle, and I definitely plan on buying her book. I've heard really good things about it, and she really didn't hold back either. And then we see Garcelle say that she thinks that she's a great friend and she will always stand up for what's right. I said, I know that's right, Garcelle. So now we see a little snippet of Erica and Rena in the car going back home and Rena saying, I knew they would do that. I knew they would try to pin it on us. And then Erica says that Kathy needs to take responsibility. I was like, shut up. I need the both of them to be off this show. I really do not want to see them for next season. I think that their time has come and gone. We the people are tired. But we see a short clip with Erica about how she received some good news and one of her lawsuits, the judge ruled that she had no involvement in what Tom was doing. And then we see that it's still a toss up on whether she has to give those $1.3 million earrings back. Now we already know that she had to give them back. <laughs> You did all that fighting to keep those earrings and the judge ruled that you had to give them back. I know I'd be embarrassed. And then we see that Rena traveled with her family to Oregon to go and visit her mom's grave. And then Rena says that it was the hardest year of her life. Then we end it with Kyle and Kyle and Kathy have only seen each other a few times since the Aspen trip. And Kyle says that all she can hope for is her family attending Farrah's wedding. And she has no idea what's about to happen. And like I've been saying, counseling immediately. Because this family dynamic is very sad and it's unsustainable. Who can live like this? Where you guys are always walking on eggshells with each other. You never know what might set somebody off not speaking for years at a time, decades at a time, everybody's beefing. That's no way to live. But I think that it's setting Kyle up to actually have a storyline for next season now, because now it's gonna be focused on Kyle trying to rebuild and repair with Kathy. And then if Rena and Erica are back, then they're gonna be at odds in their friendship. So it's gonna be a whole mess for Kyle Either way you slice it. But guys, thank you all for watching my recap. I hope you all enjoy. And you already know what to do. 
Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you all later. Bye.